Welcome to the Dream Plan Start Grow Show, where the goal is to provide you tips and tools to create and execute your business plan for success. Welcome to the Dream Plan Start Grow Show. My name is Allison Turner, and I started these interviews because I really love entrepreneurship and I love learning more about other entrepreneurial journeys besides my own. Whether you are brand new to business, you're thinking about starting a business, or you've been in business, check out the rest of my episodes at dreamplanstartgrow.com. Today, I'm honored to have with me Gianni Adamo. She's a psychotherapist, author, and relationship expert, and the founder of Fearless Love, where she helps couples create a new legacy where their families can flourish. Welcome, Gianni. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Allison. It's such a joy to be here with you today. Thank you. I know you and I have known each other for several years. We met through one of the local chambers here in South Florida, and I've seen your business grow. But how did you actually get started? Like, how did you decide? Like, have you been a psychotherapist for a long time? Like, how did you decide to open up Fearless Love? Okay, so I was in a long-term marriage um, where... My ex-husband and I invested in about 10 years out of our 15 year mar marriage in couples therapy and other medical and, you know, developmental gurus. And at the end of the day, that investment resulted with us still ending in a divorce. My ex-husband and I considered each other best friends. And so leaving that marriage was really difficult for me. Um, I ended up with some resentment. Was, a lot of people that go through divorce go through. Towards the end of the marriage, I did go back to school and decided I wanted to change my career because obviously the therapy we were getting was ineffective. So I figured, let me go become my, a therapist myself, help my marriage, and then help others. So part of that equation is true. <laughs> the other half is not true. <laughs> But anyways, so part of the equation that is true is that as I went through my journey of getting the education to become a therapist, um, ultimately I found my calling and I found that I absolutely thrive and love working with couples. And it is a pure joy for me to be in every day in my, in my job. It, it, I wake up super happy every single day because I know that I'm, my job is rewarding and I'm making a difference. Um, so that's how I ended up being a therapist and finding my calling and finding actually that it's a pure joy to do what I do every day. So you had to go through the, I guess, more negative side of the divorce to actually find your calling. That's correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, I was inspired by that, but then ultimately found my mission in life. Yeah. And I think it's hard. I know you said to help yourself, you know, like you, you and your husband, but obviously I think it's hard when you're in a relationship to try and play psychotherapist within the relationship. Yeah. That's the, a little, the good news. That's, that's, yeah. And that's true. And the good news is that uh, once I went back to school, I discovered that I was the codependent partner. So then I started to work on my codependency, which meant, you know, like I'm the one who has his agenda for the relationship and he's not really on board for that with that same agenda even if the agenda was beautiful such as growing our family you know growing in connection and intimacy and and, and depth that wasn't part of his agenda he was happy go lucky where we were in a very shallow place um where it wasn't enough for me it was not fulfilling for me i needed depth i needed more connection and intimacy yeah but so that targeted your market. I mean, so you obviously have a pretty specific niche market, which is great from the other mm -hmm. thing I do, which is the marketing side of my business, you know, which is great. I always tell people to try and niche down and they're always afraid of losing, you know, losing out on money. But like to me, the marketing message is much more clear. Everything you say can be clear and you can really attract that target market. So how have you basically grown your business as far as like attracting couples because you're specifically working with couples, correct? You're not working with one versus the other. Like if the wife comes to you and says, Hey, I do both. I work do. with both individuals and couples. Yes. Okay. Um, the good news is that when you're working with relationships with one partner coming into therapy or coaching, it will be enough to get movement in the relationship. 
unless you're dealing with very difficult personalities, um, which Mm -hmm. we would diagnose it with a personality disorder or some severe mental health issues where that means that person or one of them, whoever has a mental health does need attention. But if you're working with, you know, like the general population, if they're not dealing with severe mental health issues or personality disorders, one person can come in and revolutionize the entire relationship. As you change, they've got to change because they can no longer communicate to you in the way that it was once (laughs) working because you're evolving and you're changing your ways of handling situations and responding to, to, you know, to the things that no longer serve you in that relationship. You're, you're responding in a different way. Yeah. And I think that it's kind of interesting because I think that's whether you're in a couple's relationship or any other kind of relationship too. I mean, I think that's the same, it's the same principle. I mean, I've seen that even in business relationships where, you know, the one business partner might be working on themselves and growing and improving Mm -hmm. and things like that. And then obviously it's that same communication that forces the other person to either evolve or maybe it's not the right Mm -hmm. business relationship. So what were your challenges? Like when you started this business and decided, hey, I'm going to go all in, I'm going to create fearless love. I think you, you created it right in 2011. Is that right? So you've been in business for about 12 years. Yes. Um, well, yeah. And, and by the way, before we go into my 2011 and going into business, I want to affirm that what you just said is accurate. Uh, when you learn to communicate, whether it's in your intimate relationship or, you know, a family relationship and you go into therapy or a coach for, you know, to help you with communication stuff, those skills are transferable. So you can use them in business. And I tell this to my clients all the time. I'm like, you're paying for, to restore your marriage or heal, you know, a wound or go through your, you have depression or whatever. But as you're healing and you're learning all these skill sets that I'm teaching you, these are all transferable across your whole life yeah. and into all different aspects of your life that will help you to be very successful in relationships because that's what we all have in common here on this planet. We need relationships. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot survive without them. Yes. So it's better that we learn how to do them healthy. Exactly. Okay. So after my divorce, okay, we'll pick up there. <laughs> we'll pick up there. <laughs> so after my time. divorce. Yes. After my divorce, um, I moved to South Florida. And it's funny because it all coincided the same day. I had decided, I came to check out South Florida and I decided, um, you know, that I needed about six weeks to come back and move. So I came, I figured, you know, that I loved, I fell in love with Delray Beach. I'm like, this is my town. I'm moving here. So I gave myself six weeks. So I set the date like August uh, 20th, 2010. I'm moving down here. Then a few weeks later, after I'm back in Jersey, because I'm from New Jersey, my ex-husband calls me and we were very friendly. He's like, hey, we have a date with the, uh, the judge on August 20th. And I think we're going to just sit with the judge and review like our case. And I'm like, August 20th, we're meeting with the judge. I go, oh, my God, that's going to be your divorce date. He goes, no, no, we're just having a meeting with the judge. So I'm <laughs> like, no, we have nothing to talk to the judge about. Everything's resolved. Our assets are, are, are split up. We don't have kids. So that's going to be your divorce date. And that's exactly what happened. So on August 20th, 2010, we walked in there with our attorneys. We signed our divorce decree. I gave him a hug in the parking lot and I wished him well. And I, I set my life course down to South Florida. Um, so that I took that year to not practice therapy with like, because in Florida, I needed to get a new a license here. I'm like, I was licensed right. in New Jersey, but not here. So what I did was after I got here, I went through a certification for relationship coaching and I started doing that. And then in 2011, like that year or, you know, just when that year turned, because it was February of 2011, I went ahead and registered my business with Sunbiz. Right. Um, And the name came to me as I was walking on the beach, uh, the name Fearless Love, because I love that name. And the... I was walking on the beach speaking to someone and I realized that my husband, as I was speaking to her, he didn't love me without like his love for me was there, but it was so full of limitations and fears. Like he couldn't get beyond his fears of having a family ultimately that broke our relationship. Um, And so if he had been able to love me fearlessly, went ahead and registered my business, I named it fearless love. 
And from here, from there forth, everything, including my book, which is an Amazon bestseller, has used the title of Fearless Love. So I think it's a home run. That's how I got inspired of opening up my practice here. And, and you know, obviously, my, my, this is my calling <laughs> to help um, individuals and couples create safe, intimate marriages and fearless, loving relationships. No, I love that. I mean, I think that's so true because if you have fear around the love for your spouse or or whatever, fear around the love for anything, I mean, obviously, it's always going to be have that tainted piece to it where you can't, you know, it's too controlling. It's too, there's too many limitations, like exactly what you just said. So I love that you came up because I always wondered how you came up with that name, Fearless Love. And I was like, I wonder how she came up with that name. So you just explained it perfectly. <laughs> So what were some of your challenges, like when you first started the business, like what were some of your challenges that you went through in starting the business? Well, coming to Florida from a different state, no one knows you. So that was so challenging. So uh, what some of the things that I did in order, and then obviously my business is like all referral based back then. Today it's Google based, like everybody else's business. <laughs> like they Google you, therapist near you or near me rather, therapists near me, couples therapists near me. That's, you know, that's now how people find all businesses. Um, so, okay, so back then the referral situation. So I just joined a lot of networking groups. I joined a chamber. Um, I went to any event that I was invited to. I, I'm a speaker, so I uh, was a speaker. You know, I wh whomever invited me to be a guest speaker to their <laughs> event, whatever, paid, not paid, whatever, I accepted everything. <laughs> like, so I needed to get my name out there. I needed to. So basically, I was. Ex it's exhausting. <laughs> it's, exa it's exhausting. It's a full time job having to market yourself. Oh yeah. yeah. So that was. What I did, the majority of my work was marketing myself and being out there. And as I come today, you know, the community know, community generally knows who I am because I've been so involved with my, you know, marketing my practice and marketing myself. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's so true. I always tell people when they, you know, want to start a business that you, when you start the business, unless you have a ton mm -hmm. of money to like throw into it and bring people on, you're doing everything. So you're the... Everything. You know, and, and for you, for in uh, relationship counseling, obviously people need to click with a therapist or, you know, have some kind of personal, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, because you're they're telling you intimate st stories about their lives. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that brand and creating the brand and, I, you know, and now, I mean, it sounds like you did what you should have done back then. And I mean, now you can do a lot of that online, you know, and, and create that brand as, you know, but it, 10 years ago or 12 years ago, it wasn't as. That was, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, totally different. We were, back yeah, then. we weren't there so yet. The, <laughs> so. No. And here's the other thing I did. Okay. So that was one angle that I took um, to, to get my name out there and let people in my community know that it, I'm open for business. The other angle I took was I started um, writing um, for like Dear Abby, like newsletters. Yeah. And I then I eventually, and that was like really short and sweet, like, you know, 200 words for, you know, these, these uh, community newsletters, whatever, for couples and relationships and stuff like that. And then from there, I evolved to writing for your tango.com your tango.com um, is the largest uh, relationship media house and they're out of new york city oh, wow. yeah so i got involved with them and then i started writing articles and they a whole bunch of them got syndicated um so like awesome. i and yeah so i've ended up being like any harmony psych central uh, bride msn there's a whole bunch of places pop sugar the, that have syndicated my my uh my articles so my writing journey that's how it started so we ha we have like all these multiple journeys that i've been on <laughs> <laughs> well, and i think yeah. all of us have been on yes. anyone that started a business i mean i you know i always tell people you know i went out and did the chamber kind of circuit mm -hmm. when we first joined you know we joined the delray chamber what 10 years ago or whatever and and I think I went to like 95% of what they offered. Oh, wow. You know, mm -hmm. I went to every grand opening. I went to every event. You know, it was just essentially kind of what you did with the speaking and writing world. I mean, I, we were, I was branding our mm -hmm. company. 
Um, you know, and that's how it needed to happen is because otherwise no one knew who you were. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. That nobody knows who you are. So yeah, so that's how I then evolved as a writer to eventually uh, in 2018, I launched my book, which took me four years to write. Mm -hmm. And it's called From Love Trauma to <laughs> Fearless Love, Seven Tango Steps for Breaking Free from Narcissists and Predators. So this is a, a, a journey of healing for anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's based loosely on my experience here on my first relationship after my divorce. I was basically targeted by a sweet and charming narcissistic sociopathic man <laughs> I had no clue even though I didn't like him at first so I ran but he was able to trigger my chemistry and then the relationship started um so bottom line there is the um the book is a journey of healing and it actually has became an Amazon bestseller and it has received a whole bunch of awards including the uh, new author of the year 2020 oh. when I launched the uh the audiobook so by audiobook reviewer they gave me the new author of the year award awesome yeah I never knew because I, mm -hmm. I again I always wondered if that book was I mean I, I assumed it had some kind of personal story in it so, you know even if it was loosely based like you said yeah, yeah it weaves in <laughs> yeah it's loosely yeah so it weaves in some facts and then some imaginary you know fictional stuff because I, I didn't want it to be like a memoir no. so it's a, it's a it's a fantasy but the book is for anyone who's been involved with a narcissist or a predator, um, anyone exiting from toxic relationships um, or trying to break free from the attraction cycle of these exploitive uh, individuals that really have nothing to offer a relationship, but only to take and exploit their, you know, their partner and their victims. <sighs> Yeah. And unfortunately, we live in a world that there's a, there seems to be a lot of that. I always read, you know, the stories, you know, or see someone share about it or whatever it is. Um, there seems to be a lot more than you would think there would be. But I know there's a lot of unhealthy people out there. So there is a lot, a lot more than we had hoped for. And I and the problem is, too, um, as our modern times evolve, there's more and more narcissism in our culture. The more the culture becomes more individualistic and doesn't um, protect the family and really keep the family as priority, the more we become so, fo so solely focused on ourselves. So that's just really a, a lot of narcissism. It's all about me, myself, and I versus the family unit, the community, the country, the planet as a whole. Like we are interconnected and like we cannot live as islands and yep. somehow us Westerners have this mindset that it's all about me, myself, and I, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, and it seems like social media plays a big a big role in that because, mm -hmm. you know, you always see, obviously, much of the time you see the highlight reel of everyone's life as opposed to anything tragic or traumatic or whatever, which is fine, but, you know, it's all about, like, how do I look? Do I, you know, like, am I looking the right mm -hmm. way? The selfie, the, you know... Um, so it's, it's yeah, or the instant, and the, that. yeah, and the instant gratification that we have in our modern world, it's all about instant gratification and not putting in the hard work. It's funny yeah. because now with, um, the AI, and so a lot of people and writers are using AI to write, right? So they don't have to like this younger generation, they don't actually need to learn how to write. Why? Cause AI can do it for them. I yeah. was so saddened. I'm like, so instead of learning how to write properly, how to write a, a, an article, they're just letting the internet do it for you. And so that makes me very sad. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of things that technology helps us with, but it's also hindering our growth and our evolution. Yeah. I'm like, no, not to be a Debbie Downer, but there's a lot of negative well. that comes with that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think there's probably, I don't know if there's as much negative as positive, but I mean, you know, there's definitely more, I mean, I, I pity teachers today because I don't even know how you, you know, until something comes out that shows that it's quote unquote plagiarized from AI or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, there's always been a plagiarism type of thing that you can scan articles through or, or papers through, but I don't know if there is anything, nothing I know about at this point for AI. So like, how are you ever going to know? Mm -hmm. 
you know, unless you suddenly start writing much better than you, know, <laughs> like you, have. you, you wrote an article and it's like, all of a sudden this looks like, you know, a, a PhD article, you know, and then obviously um, that would make a difference. Mm -hmm. but, That's but true. Otherwise, you know, there's no way to tell, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but so from the time when you started and ramping up your practice, and you did the speaking tour and the the writing and everything like how long did that really take you to get the practice like fully ramped up my practice yeah so it took time um and then the other problem was that when i arrived we were still in the middle of the financial crisis from 20 2009 2008 but that all affected right. us for like five years it was Seven yeah years. it was yep. awful so that prolonged my ability to actually be provide, you know, like generating enough income where I didn't have to be living off of my life savings. So for years, I had a supplement from my life savings to keep myself and my hope and my dream alive because that's what it was. I had a hope and a dream and I was not going backwards and I wasn't going to go work for somebody else and I was not going to take insurance either. Because my family's like, well, why don't I just take insurance? I'm like, I'm not selling myself to the insurance companies. Sorry, I'm here to do my job and I want to do it the best I can. And I, I know I'm on the right path. And I'm so happy I did not take a shortcut by taking, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to do the insurance panels. They, it doesn't work no. the same way. You get paid a fraction of what you're worth. And then you have to work double the caseload in order to make the living that you yeah. need to make. So you're tired and exhausted and fatigued. If I had done that, I would not have time for my public speaking. Speaking, I would not have time for my writing. I would not have time to write my book. If I had done that path, which would have been the easy path, sure, I'll just use the insurance panels to feed me my clients. Then I wouldn't have developed myself as the entrepreneur that I am today. So this is important to understand. Yeah. You've got to pay your price. Yeah. And I've been paying my price year after year. So finally, um, by the time I launched the book, which was 2018, I was finally in a place that I no longer needed to dip into my into my life savings. So it took like seven years wow. to finally not just be, um, you know, making enough because I was like, you know, like I was just in, like in that place where it just was enough to live off of, but not like to save right. and to have a profit. So it took me like seven to eight years okay. to finally generate a profit. So let's just say that way. Yeah. And I think that's important for someone that wants mm -hmm. to start a business to understand. And like you pointed out a minute ago, you know, we live in the society of instant gratification. And I know, you know, like my stepdaughters who's 18 wants to start businesses. And, you know, I, I've tried to impart some of that without being too overbearing um, because then she just t tunes me out. So, so uh because it's uh, stepmom telling her that, but you know, I think like when I deal with business coaching clients, what, you know, who are starting a business, it's like, there is a long play. It's not, it's not like, here's my idea. I mean, there's a few ideas that maybe hit, you know, if you have an app or you have a, you know, but even then, you know, even if you're developing an app, mm -hmm. there's so much that went into it for years prior to launching that app that it's not like it just hits and you make, you know, you sell it for $10 million and that's it, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it was the years before that got you to that point. And I think that's so important. And, you know, congratulations on staying true to your vision, because that's the other piece is uh, the challenge I find, you know, in working and even in my own business is you have to stay true to your vision and do the work as well, the, your own personal development work to be able to do that because you have to, you know, it takes a strong person to stay in there and have the faith and have the, you know, the hope. And, you know, even when things, you know, go zigzag and zigzag down and, you know, to stay true mm -hmm. to that vision and not, like you said, you would have, could have taken insurance panels and I know they pay a fraction of the price. Um, you know, I've, I've heard enough from therapists and doctors and things like mm -hmm. that to know what they pay. So, mm -hmm. so kudos to you to, for staying true to the vision. I mean, I think that takes, 
um, the grit you know, guts mm-hmm. and, and it does. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that is something that as entrepreneur and that the good news is that I do have an entrepreneurial spirit. That's part of my personality. And not everybody has that. So that means we take high risks. Um, we will yeah. wager it all. And that's what I did. I'm like, in that eight year period where I wasn't generating a profit, I ultimately went into debt. So I ate out all of my life savings. And then I started accumulating some debt. And then eventually, obviously, I got rid of all of that and organized myself financially, where I'm, you know, in a place in a good position now. But I wasn't afraid to go through my life savings. And I wasn't afraid to get into a a bit of debt. Obviously, I wasn't like $100,000 of debt or anything like that. But still, um, I was willing to stay true to my vision. And at the end, it pays off because at the end, I have a bestseller. At the end, I have a practice that's thriving. Right now, I'm scaling it. That's where I am right now. Mm-hmm. I brought in um, in a uh, in a what? Do you, she's the um, operations coordinator, and she had been one of my interns when I was doing the book launch back five years ago. So she came to me and had wanted to, uh, you know, to partner with me. She really enjoyed working with me when she was doing her internship. And I said, you know what, I'd love to have you back and I'll open, I'll create a position for you. So she's my operations coordinator. And in in 2024, I'll bring her on as a clinician as well for Fearless Love. Um, And right now, besides doing individual couples and counseling um, and coaching, I'm also launching couples retreats this fall uh, starting in another month or this month like October in 2023 launching couples retreats here in downtown Delray Beach which basically these will be um, high-end like upscale curated highly curated retreats for individual couples and families that would be staying here in downtown Delray Beach and then myself and my team would be coming in and treating them right there in the privacy of their um, suite um, so that we can work through whatever is causing their, you know, division, their rift in reference to communication or intimacy, um, repairing um, whatever is causing them pain in their relationship so that therefore they can create a new vision, they can create a new legacy for their families to thrive, And just break through cycles of generational things that have not worked because sometimes we get these from our generations prior and we have not been able to nip those things in the bud and let's shift to healthy and happy and harmony and peace in this home and in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting that what you just said kind of sounds like, you know, like a business (laughs) I mean, Mm -hmm. not that, you know, marriage can be a, you know, Mm -hmm. obviously it's a personal relationship, but it can be Mm -hmm. as like a business. I mean, you, a lot of the language you use, like I use in the coaching world of, you know, vision and creating that harmony and, you know, Mm. bring, you know, building as a unit, things like that, because ultimately you're doing that on a business side too, which is what you've done in your business. So it's interesting that the language kind of, in my opinion, kind of crosses over that, (laughs) crosses over similarly. Mm -hmm. It does, again, because it's a language of relationships. See that? It's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's all about our connection. So what I do is pretty root, again, because as as we talked about earlier, whatever skill sets you're learning here, whatever whatever money you're paying for your couples therapy and your, you know, your healing journey here, you're going to use all this stuff in your business world and all the other types of relationships. It goes, it goes, um, it like trickles into every aspect of your life because in every mm-hmm. aspect of your life, you're in some sort of relationship. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So how did you get to the point where you decided you wanted to scale? Because I know some business owners, they, especially in kind of what you do, the therapy world, they just, they're, they're happy. I have a cousin that does, is a therapist. And so far she's happy, you know, just being, I shouldn't say just being, that's not the right but word. Just, but just, yeah, doing her know, craft. Being a, a, being a, yeah, being a solopreneur. She works for herself and, and, and has a pretty full client load and everything. And, and that's fine. And she doesn't take insurance just like you. So how did you decide you wanted to scale this business? So last fall, I had gone to India on vacation for three weeks. 
I never had India on my radar to go on vacation, especially for three weeks ever. Um, so I never even had any of the Asian countries. So it wasn't just India. So like, I just never had it in me. But one of my dear friends, um, who's an older woman, um, and she's actually one of the oldest female photographers of our country. And she's a really interesting character. I love her. She's super old, but she's like young at spirit. Right. And so she's like, I'm going to India. And India is one of her favorite places in the world. And I have heard many beautiful things about her experiences in India. So she's like, I'm going to India with a small group of friends. Do you want to join us? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking... She's a, here's this world traveler. She loves India. So I'm thinking why I think this is a, an opportunity of a lifetime because I, again, I don't have India on, a, on my radar. I have no desire to go to India. This is not something that I'm like, it's a dream of mine. But when a friend of yours is going and they're world travelers and they know the world pretty well and she thinks India is cool, I'm like, sure, sign me up. I had no idea what I signed myself up for. <laughs> no, none. So maybe like the month before, obviously I got all my shots. I had a ton of shots. I had three shots to go to India. It's like going to Africa because you can get all sorts of diseases through their food and their water and they all could kill you. Oh, so yeah. Oh yeah. It's a third world country. Yeah. So it's like going to, it's like going to Africa when it comes to illnesses and diseases. So you've got to get yourself in your immunity all set situated. So then I decided after all these immunity shots that I should go go on YouTube and v visit some of these videos on, on, on India. Some of them were really cool because I want to know what to wear. And I knew that they, as women, we have to be very conservative and kind of cover ourselves up and don't show too much, whatever. Okay, so I decided I would bring a few things and go shopping there because um, I figure I love shopping. And I, when I go on my, my vacations, I love to shop. So I'm like, fine, I'll just bring a handful of my Florida clothes and then I'll shop for the rest there. And then I started to see some on the safety in India. And those started to make me a little bit panicky uh, because it's not the safest world, place in the world. And then I started to see videos on the food and how you can get really, really sick. Um, I mean, really sick um, and get hepatitis and get a whole bunch of situations. Oh. And oh. then, uh, yeah. So, so the safety isn't so great. The food is not so hot for us either. Um, so I started to be a little worried. But anyways, I went off on my trip. Um, and the first thing that hit me was that I could not see the sun. Really? We come from South Florida. <laughs> yeah. It's always sunny yes. here. It is the stark contrast of living in South Florida, which means wow. there's a haze of pollution oh. covering the sun no matter where we went in this country. Other than if you're in the mountains and high above the haze. Really? You can now see the sun. Huh. But if you're on the flatlands and if you're at sea level, you don't see the sun. Really? That was really hard for me coming from South Florida and every day is sunny here. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the buildings are in disarray. It looks like a bomb hit them, some of them. Um, the streets are in disarray. There's like potholes wow. everywhere. Their animals are free because they're sacred and some of them are being worshipped. So therefore... They poop everywhere. So there's scents and smells that we're not accustomed to. And watch where you're stepping. <laughs> <laughs> Big cow poop. I know the cow cows are sacred there, right? I mean, I know. Exactly. There's all this stuff going on. And then we've got a billion people all around you. Beep, beep. You know, like they're like, you know, that's how they communicate on the road because they don't follow any rules on the road. They just pass you, move around as they really? wish. So the only way to communicate is the beep, 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 beep. So oh like God. one beep is one thing, two beeps is another, three beeps is like, look out, I'm coming through, you better watch out. Oh, wow. I started, I, I, in three <laughs> weeks, I finally started to understand their communicate. Isn't it interesting? I finally started to understand their communication on the road. I'm like, oh, I understand that that one beep is just like, hi, I'm here. You know, like, just, just look out for me. They're like the big beep. It's like wow. where they're putting their hand through. They're like, I'm going through, you better watch out. So I'm like, oh my God, it's, it's not even organized chaos. It's just like chaos. So between <laughs> the sights, the sounds, the chaos, the lack of sun, it's um, really a hard trip um, wow. for people yeah. who come from America <laughs> who are not used to so much poverty, so much pollution, yeah. so much disorganization and the culture. 
in the midst of all that too, there's a lot of beauty. The people are quite sweet and quite welcoming, um, quite lovely. They treated us like rock stars. They wanted to take pictures with us everywhere we went. Um, so it was really cute. Um, and then some of those sacred sites that we went to, we went to temples, we went to the Taj Mahal, mm -hmm. we went to Delhi, and we went to like the old town. So like there's a lot of beautiful cultural history that is so different from ours. And that was amazing. The trip overall, I would say, was transformational for me and anyone who goes to see such a stark difference in culture it's 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 got to impact you um yeah. one of the things that it impacted me though is that unfortunately um india does rate the highest rapes around the world it's 85 rapes really? a day really yeah the bbc wow. reported 85 rapes a oh. day um because women, women don't have the same stature there, yes, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Women are still dominated and controlled by the family or their mm. spouse. So this is all heart-wrenching. Heart-wrenching for someone like yeah. me. Heart-wrenching. So when I came back from that, at first I needed like three weeks just to deal with the overwhelming emotions. Um, I also couldn't eat their food because it's all full of hot and spicy and they don't make you like fresh food like we do here. You know, they'll just prepare it fresh. They prepare everything because they're feeding, I guess, a billion people. So everything has to be pre-done, whatever. Um, oh, wow. So I could, no matter how many times you ask, please don't add any hot spicy. I can't process that. My system can't handle it. They can't do it. They. So if you find flatbread, they're non, which is delicious. And sometimes I would find a yeah. soup and sometimes I would find rice, white rice. Or, and eggs, when in the morning I would take the breakfast eggs, steal two of the hard boiled eggs so I could have two eggs for lunch and some crackers. So I ended up a little anemic when I came back and there was like a lot of psychological stuff that I needed to process and understand. So after like recovering from that, I realized I can't stay the solopreneur that I am. I have a calling that's not just for the Americans. It's a universal. What I my message of love and healing is universal. It's not just for Americans or Latinos because I'm Latina. Okay, so I came back from that and I was really motivated to really be connected with the world and globally. And I started to listen more to the wow. BBC so I can understand what's going on around the world. That was October. I came back at the end of October. And then by December, I had made my decision that I'm scaling my practice, that I will become more of a global brand. Um, in this year, I have invested a lot of money and have redesigned my logo. Um, I hired um, the, the operations manager. I've Behind the scenes, I've changed and brought in different teams to support my business, um, created a new website. Um, developing, you know, like marketing campaigns. I am really hitting the ground running when it comes to coming, returning back to public speaking and just really becoming a household brand, fearless love. I want I, my vision now is to turn fearless love into like a household brand that will be recognizable around the world so that when couples and families decide that they need support and that they need to restore and restructure that they know they can come to South Florida and come visit Gianni, or we can do the telehealth because I do all, I'm licensed in multiple states. We can do telehealth. We can incorporate intensives. We can incorporate retreats to help you turn your marriage around, to help you turn that family dysfunction around and find healing and, and really restore the harmony in this home. Wow. <laughs> so that's where I'm at now. That's a fascinating story. I, I think I heard you talk about India a little bit at a networking event you and I both were at and but I didn't hear that that was what impacted you to scale your business, which is, I mean, that to me is like fascinating and, and uh, awe inspiring that that trip really focused you in. So how do you see because you talked about it being a global name? And obviously, since India is a relatively poor country, I know there's people that do have money over there, but um, mm -hmm. how do you see like globally impacting a country like India, for example, like down the road? 
So the book that I wrote from Love Trauma to Fearless Love is on that subject of basically um, pretty much rape, even though it happens to men as well. One in six men get raped. One in three women get sexually abused or raped. But this issue of rape and sexual abuse is something that my book covers. It's my book covers about um, abuse of power. And mostly it's a, a male to female abuse from the male to the female. So the, my book covers this whole problem with, you know, and the journey of healing to restoring the person who's under that. But for them, it's a whole system involved for their whole country. So it's a slower process here it's easier because our system is set up that we don't right. allow that to happen when it happens people need to be brought to justice yeah. and they usually are or at least we try because they some of them yes. do get away with it we know that um but yes but still it's in, in theory right they're supposed to get brought to justice um so yeah so my book is ultimately a, a journey of healing for those who are abusing their powers in a relationship and suppressing or oppressing a victim, which usually tends to be the women, even though it's, you know, it's just, it's a story between a male, a relationship between a man and a woman mm-hmm. in the book, yeah. between Elena, Cesar and, and Elena. Okay. Yeah. So I, I cover this topic. I have to read the book. <laughs> I haven't read the book yet. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's just not being covered from like well, no. the nation and the culture, right. but it's within right. the relationship. Right. But getting that message out, mm-hmm. because obviously I'm sure a lot of people don't have internet over there or don't have, I don't even know if, can women be educated in India? I mean, because I know in some of those countries. It's about the money. Yeah, they can, but it's the yeah. money issue. Most of them are under the caste yeah. system and there's not a lot of money right. for those women. So if you're from the upper class, yes, you will be yeah. educated. So it's really trying to educate the upper class and then hope, hoping that it kind of goes down the, down the, down the stream mm-hmm. or down the, down the caste system. That's correct. And coming back to the book and reference to the universal message of love and hope and restoration and healing. I also use the Argentine tango as lessons on love between the man and the woman. So the beauty of using the Argentine tango is it's universal. Music, dance is universal. <laughs> Even if they've yep. never seen the Argentine tango, they can just envision in their head some sort of dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's still universal for healing. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So I, you know, unless they're from the upper class, they'll know what the Argentine tango is, probably the caste right. system, if, unless they've seen it on TV, on somebody's TV somewhere, fine, but right. they may not know what that is. But it's still a dance and they could just envision something in their head. So it still works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, I mean, to me, and I'm not a dancer. I have like, I don't have the rhythm to even figure that all that out, you know, but like, that's a, like a work of art <laughs> when I see it. I'm it like, is. Oh my God. You and know, that's because the two are in such units. I could see, cause I remember you said it, the book title had the what seven tangos to steps whatever. for breaking free yeah. seven tango yes. steps for breaking free from narcissism. Yeah. predators. And you're right. I thought that was interesting that you used that because I, you know, like the the man and the woman or the partners are so in enmeshed in like every, like you said before, in relationships, there's like that give and take, and something that this person does impacts far more than just this person. It impacts a much greater, a greater piece that we often don't think about nowadays. So I think, and that tango really displays that. Yeah. And you've used the right word. The Argentine tango is an expressive art. So it is art when I, cause I'm, I, I am yeah. an Argentine dancer and performer. And wow. that's the, the book came about because I married my business, which is psychology, right? And my hobby, the Argentine dancer, I married them and turned them into a book to help others to go through their journey <laughs> of healing. So when I danced the Argentine tango and, you know, cause I'm, I've been, oh my God, I took so many lessons. I took seven years of lessons and I danced almost like wow. almost every day for those seven years. I became addicted to the Argentine tango. When I went through my trauma from that first relationship that I had here, when I got divorced, that trauma led me to become obsessed with the Argentine tango. So wow. it was like, that was a marriage made in heaven for me because the Argentine tango was able to offset. So when you're in PTSD, you've got 
anxiety, worry, mm -hmm. stress. Uh, you're startled over everything and anything. Uh, you can't sleep. It's all this yeah. uh, cortisol running through your system, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's disrupting your whole life and your sleep and your eating habits. Everything is disrupted. The Argentine tango brought to me bliss, peace, serenity, joy, excitement, motivation, um, anticipation, all of this positive emotions that were now rivaling the PTSD. You see how healing our hobbies can be? Our hobbies can be, oh, yeah. if we really get focused, our hobbies can generate and stabilize us. So therefore, I didn't lose my mind mm -hmm. completely. Why? Because I was really stabilizing <laughs> with my uh, obsession right. with the Argentine tango. Plus, eventually. Is that when you started it at that point or had you already done it in New Jersey before you came here? The, my dancing, as I call it, my dancing hobby started here post-divorce. It was one of the outlets I had um, to create friendships and to, you know, my pastimes. So, but once I went through the trauma, it, it be, I became obsessed because the brain yeah. needed something to feed off of and need right. like the energy and to stabilize itself. So it, thank yeah. God I, it's a coping skill versus yeah. an addiction, which is alcohol, exactly. drugs, the sex, you know, you can turn into a sex addict, whatever, just to go shift yourself from all of these yeah. negative emotions that are happening right. um, and, and, you know, PTSD stuff. So that stabilized me. Plus, then I obviously went off to get therapy. Um, but anyway, so coming back to your point, which is the art. So when I dance, even today, when I dance the Ardham Time Tango, I am an artist. I am creating beauty within mm -hmm. this relationship or this couple that we just created, myself and the lead. Um, in the Argentine tango, there's a lead and there's a follow. And that is, these are lessons mm -hmm. that I teach on love. Someone is leading you through. And then it is a safe embrace. We're in a safe embrace. It's, there are safety. There are limits. There are boundaries. Right. His hands could only go to certain places, not in other places. If not, it becomes unsafe for us, right? So there are, just like in relationships, there are boundaries and limits on everything. And then there's mm -hmm. freedom within that structure once you understand the language of the Argentine tango, you've got freedom of expression there. Once you know the language of a healthy relationship, then you've got freedom of expression there. But it's all contained yeah. with boundaries and limits that make it safe. Wow. You see this? It's all mm -hmm. transferable. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that was beautiful that you said I want to jump off on, it's not an enmeshment because enmeshed relationships are toxic. Enmeshment means we lose ourselves and, and, and we don't have a real sense of self. We are too merged. In the Argentine tango, we're two people who are independent that come together in intradependency. But if one falls, the other one does not need to fall. In fact, I've had that happen with a brand new dance floor which polished and the gentleman that was dancing with me or leading me, somehow, I don't know, he lost his footing and he slipped from, from underneath me. And I was like, but I did not fall. And I'm the one in heels. <laughs> Why? Because I was dancing. I was dancing in right. my power, not his. Even though he was leading me through the Argentine tango, yeah. I'm still in my power. And I teach my clients that. When your partner disappears, even from underneath you, because there's an accident or whatever the situation is, obviously he was fine. He got up and we continued. But, you know, when we are in a healthy relationship, we are intradependent, not codependent, not enmeshed. That means we each have a sense of self. Yeah. And then we come together to do this right. dance called love or relationship or the tango. So mm -hmm. hopefully that helps you to understand yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. You, know, you, you definitely have a way with words. <laughs> and so as we start to wind down here, I have two more questions. So what has been your greatest success at this point? So now you've been in business for what, 12, around 12 years. 
since you started. So what's been your greatest success? I got to say, being that I'm in the industry that I'm in, my greatest success is actually going through my own journey of healing and liberation and freedom. And I want to just say to the audience, uh, even though this is for more entrepreneurs, a show, but my industry, you need to be set free from all this past yeah. traumas, from all the hurts and the wounds that have come from childhood, bad relationships, car accidents, whatever the trauma was or is that has entered your life. Stop ignoring it. Wake up. It's affecting your life. You yeah. don't need that to make yourself successful. Some people feel like, well, if I change this part of myself, then I won't be successful. No, you can be successful. And in fact, you'll be more successful because you won't have something that's called self-sabotaging involved. You're no longer right. in self-sabotage mode. When we're like dealing with all this past traumas and histories and things that we don't want to address all that's pulling us back into the past. It's not allowing us to move yeah. forward into the future. It just keeps self-sabotaging us. So stop the self-sabotaging, go for your healing. It is possible to go for your full healing. And what happens is it opens you up, you up to really live authentically, to live in freedom, to allow your imagination to really have like less limits because all that stuff in the past hinders us and limits us yeah. in how far we can go and how far we can reach. I agree. So that's my main uh, message. If healing is possible and you don't need all that baggage from the past, stop denying it, face it, heal, and you're going to be even more successful because it's not going to be dragging you down. Yeah. I think that's, that's so true because I, I mean, I've been in therapy a couple of times, like in different periods of my life for different different reasons. I mean, one more early, like early 20s, some more of that young adult stuff. And then one in my late 30s. And um, I know both of those times impacted me positively and made me kind of who I am today because of what, you know, what I developed out of that. So I think that's uh, 100% true because you have to. I mean, mm -hmm. I even talk about that in the coaching side because, you know, you pull in, you know, when you start a business, you pull in all those, if you haven't dealt with those, like you're saying, those traumas or those even fears you may not even know you have. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, like you said, you went for broke, basically, you know, when you went all in on your business, if you don't do that, you're either going to bow out very quickly, which is why we lose businesses after, you know, I mean, there's so many businesses that fail after what, one year and five years, In five years. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You know, or you're going to stick it out and can, you know, stay focused on the vision, have either the, you know, maybe put, have some debt, but, you know, maybe go through some savings, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but know that you're going to have that success as long as you have that strong foundation. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So, Absolutely. And, and I want to um, also offer to our audience, um, mm -hmm. for anyone who's interested in working with me, whether it's for counseling, coaching, um, or couples retreats, I am offering your audience a free 15-minute consultation. So they just have to go on my awesome. website, and that's fearlesslove.net, fearlesslove.net. Um, and just click on the free 15 minute consultation and, awesome. and they can schedule themselves at a time that works for them. And if they have questions about the retreats, um, that I'm launching now in October, 2023, they could also just fill out the form. There's a contact form at the back of, you know, of that website that, um, they can just put in their questions about the retreats. Um, but anyway, so either way, they can just schedule a free 15 minute consultation or, or ask their questions on the contact form on the website. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that for my audience. <laughs> um, You're welcome. Because I know, you know, as I said, I've known Gianni. I mean, what's it? I don't even know how many years. It's been a it's while. Been um, it's okay. probably, it was I'm before thinking. Your book, it was probably oh, yeah. right before your book came out. So if that came out in 2018. So at least eight or nine years, I'm thinking. Because when yeah. did you, did it, I thought you, we had met when you had started, because I, I've been down here since 2010, but I'd say I started with the chamber around 2013, somewhere around so there, probably, I think. So probably in 20, yeah, because I was in the chamber probably since 2012 or 13. Yeah, exactly. I think we might've so, started around the same time, like 20, I'm not sure when I started, but 2012, 2013, yeah. somewhere around there. 
So I think we kind of yep. met around, we both had started and we were still like newbies to Florida and <laughs> and all that wonderful yeah. stuff. Yeah, I had been in Florida, but okay. like I hadn't been a business owner. I'd been doing other things, you know, working for someone else. So, um, so yeah, it was more the launch of the business for me, mm -hmm. which brought me into that chamber. And so it was a whole different, whole different lifestyle, a yeah. <laughs> different way of It being, is very so. different lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just like, oh, this is, this is a whole different way of thinking. I mean, I didn't even, you know, I live in downtown Delray and I didn't even know, you know, I always voted, but I didn't really get that involved in, mm -hmm. you know, any of that. I mean, I would do a little bit of research and whatnot, but now like I know all the candidates typically that run, I know, you know, like it's, it's a whole different ball game because you're so involved kind of and, con involved and connected in, in, in mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Allison, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. This is so much fun. Yeah, no, it has been fun. It's been fun reconnecting. I know we kind of reconnected out of the blue earlier this year and we hadn't seen each other for a while, I think through the some of the pandemic stuff that went on. And and um, so it's been great reconnecting. And I love, I love the direction you're going because I think there needs to be more of that global impact, you know, especially in what you do. Because, I mean, I think the healthier we can be you know, in relationship with other people, the world's only going to get better. Yes, exactly. And in our relationships. Yeah. Absolutely. So like one relationship, yeah. one family at a time, and we can make the difference at impacts. Yep, absolutely. And thank you everyone for joining the Dream Plan Start Grow show. I do love working with new business owners or someone that wants to start a business. So if you have any questions for me, you can go on my website, theallisonturner.com, and check out either my complimentary webinar that's coming up, or I do have a free gift there. And I would love to talk to you and see how I can help. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Dream Plan Start Grow podcast with Allison Turner. If you like what you heard, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Join our community by joining the Dream Plan Start Grow Facebook group or for more resources, go to my website, theallisonturner.com.